today is Peter de Tender. Peter, how are you? Uh, David, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Tell me, uh, where are you now and what do you do for a living? Good. Um, so I'm currently in Belgium, which is actually uh, rather exceptional. Well, not for the last couple of months anymore, but uh, I was traveling quite a lot. Mm, but uh, I've been home for about six months now. So um, what I do for a living is inspiring Azure customers and partners on certification. And outside of that, obviously training them on uh, using the platform. Ah, yes, and then we, when we, you and I met, it was uh, it was not in Belgium and it was not in the United States. I think we met one time in Denmark and one time in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I used to travel a lot as well, and that's changed for me too. Um, are you teaching? I understand you're teaching a lot about uh, Azure certification. Is that right? Um, well, it's a, yeah, it's a it's a little bit mixed. So for well, a couple of years, about ten years, I was uh, running my own business. Um, as a Microsoft consultant, trainer, uh, architect, but quite a lot of training. And then about six years ago, jumped on the, the Azure platform. And since September last year, actually took a role within Microsoft as an Azure technical trainer. Congratulations. Was a pretty, thank you. <laughs> was a pretty well, new team at that time, uh, part of the, the global Microsoft learning uh, organization. And what we do is providing Azure readiness every single week to the top Azure customers or the promising customers. So could be compete customers who are using another cloud platform today that want to get onboarded to Azure. And our trainer team is helping them. Now the, the training itself, so the, the core is really upskilling on technology. Mm -hmm. And the side effect is obviously certification, but we're not delivering the, the training for the certification per se. So I see. It's a nice add-on if they want to take the exam, and obviously we influence a little bit, like helping them, sharing tips and tricks. But it's not like yeah, you probably remember in like the, the early Windows Server days, like you go to a learning partner, you take a five-day class, and Friday afternoon everybody's taking the exam, and hopefully you pass. But obviously in cloud, it's not really doable anymore. And the goal of the training is not passing an exam; it's really learning Azure. So there's a little twist on how you deliver the, the workshops. So Yeah, I actually used to be a trainer like that where we taught those okay. five day classes uh, to prepare for for the MCSD more than the yeah. MCSE side of things, mm -hmm. but the developer side. Uh, yeah. But it's not really obvious. What, what, why is it uh, not, why are people not able to do that, take five day class and then take the exam? Is it just too much material? Is that why? Yeah, there's, uh, so even, well, I would say after 10 years of Azure, um, what we see is that a lot of customers are still new to the platform. And yeah, next to that, there's way too much in there. And the exams are hard as well because it's not just testing you on like the how good you can learn. Like if you're a fast learner, you read a book, you memorize everything. In in yeah, the older days you could take the exam and you get like 70, 80 percent. Where in the way the exams are working nowadays for the last about two, three years now. They're testing you on a lot of, like a lot more on your practical knowledge. So, if you if you use the platform every single day in and out, yeah, you're never going to use the full platform. Like in my case, I came from data center background, so I'm pretty good in Azure infrastructure. But like Azure platform services, the whole container uh, stack, it's it's still pretty new, right? Okay. And Nobody can manage everything nowadays. So that, yeah, what makes the exams hard where, yeah, we're gonna test you up and down, left and right on the platform. Okay, now I wanna focus today on uh, certification and uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. there's exams involved. What what exactly is involved in getting uh, Azure certified, if that's the right term? Yeah. Um, so there's, well, you, you mentioned the, the MCSD or the, the MCSE. Um, so about uh, three years ago, Somewhere September 18, I think, uh, Microsoft Learning decided to start with a, a new certification model. So specifically for Azure, that's I would say my core specialty. Um, you start with like what we call standalone exams. So you have the, the baseline, it's the AZ 900, that's Azure Fundamentals. And from there you move up. So you have Azure Administrator exam, you have the Azure Developer exam. Um, there's a security specific one, there's an IoT developer specific one. 
So I think we have um, like nine or 10 in meantime. We are expanding with uh, data solutions. And so the, the idea is that you can take any exam you want, and then you can combine some of them to become like an Azure um, solution architect expert. So let's say you take the fundamentals, that's like the, the entry point, and from there you add the 204, AZ204, that's developing Azure solutions. And if you combine those two, then you become an Azure solution expert. Mm, okay. Or you could focus on security, you could focus on data solutions. So it's more based on the job role and not really based on the technology anymore, like in the MCSD world, where you could take a Windows Server exam, an Exchange exam, but we're not really testing on what's your job like today, where in the newer model that they used for Azure and then Office 365 and probably for Dynamics in meantime as well, where they really focus on, as an Azure admin, let's say, what is your day-to-day -day job looking like and what are the parts in the platform that you touch every single day, every week, every month, where as a developer, you're probably going to use some overlap, but you're probably not the person who's going to touch on the network, but you still right. need to know the network fundamentals. Right. And that's why that Azure Fundamentals exam is interesting to get a broader spectrum of the platform and then moving up on a more specialized um, exam. So uh, you have to take, um, it seems like everybody has to take this fundamentals exam and then you can specialize and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, depending on what kind of certification you want, you'll take um, at least one other exam. What what is um what's the motivation? Why should people get certified? Um, well, I think it's a a lot of different ones, and well, I I'll start with why I'm taking cert uh, exams or, or yeah following the, the certification. So yeah, first of all, for what I'm doing as a Azure technical trainer within Microsoft, uh, obviously we need to be certified ourselves okay. be, before we can deliver the training. Um, outside of that, as a Microsoft certified trainer. You also need to be certified before you can deliver the training. So that's, I would say, just yeah for your day-to-day -day job. Um, but if you're like working for uh, a non-technical organization, let's say you're uh, the lead developer in a finance organization or anything else, then yeah, I think it's it's always interesting to yeah just prove to yourself how well you know the technology. Um, next to that, it could help you in, in moving up in your career where you can literally prove like on your resume, I got five Azure exams where it means that, yeah, you invested time, you invested yeah, effort, you took time to study, to learn the platform and you have the credentials. And again, it's, it's not obviously not a hundred percent guarantee that you're like the, the super expert because you got all the certifications, but again, because the exams are like more tailored to the day-to-day -day job. They're technically yeah, becoming harder every single update um, to just make them more relevant. Because otherwise, I mean, the, the whole world could take Azure exams, but then you're losing the the, the credential, right? Mm -hmm. So so for me, it's, it's yeah, first, first of all, to just, yeah, be valid for your own job. Like I can prove that I'm capable of doing something with Azure. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the certification to to just have that statement. And next to that, if you start with fundamentals, you move up to developer, maybe DevOps, maybe security or architect. Yeah, it's it's a logical roadmap in your career as well, where if you will, if you aspire to become um, a solution architect, yeah, you need to have the baseline. So to me, that would mean you need to take the Azure architect certification to just again show to your employer or maybe your future employer, like I have the credential, I, I right. can do this, right? So, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, and maybe uh, a pay raise, that's yep. what we used. So when I was still managing uh, the partner, we used it to, to yes, yeah, stimulate our uh, consultants. And whenever they took an exam, they passed the exam. Yeah, we just gave them like a little bonus or a gift card or literally a pay raise. Uh, we used to, when I was working for a Microsoft partner years ago, we used to get yeah. those, but they they dried up yeah. <laughs> after a while. <laughs> um, uh, that's that's good. I like that. There's um, uh, as you say, it's not perfect, 
but it does provide some evidence that you have uh, a certain level of competency mm -hmm. in a subject, which could be, uh, which is which is good on your resume, which can uh, not only prove to yourself that you have that competence, but uh, potential employees. It could be it's between you and another candidate, and you've got the certification. Mm -hmm. That's one leg up, all things being equal. Absolutely, um, and. Uh, so, uh, what's what are some what's some advice you can give to people that are considering pursuing the certification? Um, well, so the the I would say that the first advice is just go for it. And I mean, we all know the stories that again, exams are hard, and there's a lot of buzz around it in in a good way, sometimes a negative way. That although the exams are hard and we're trying to to map them um, with real life scenarios that it's somehow still like too theoretical. Mm. Um, but on the other side, just go for it. And if you are totally new to Azure, start with the fundamentals and the, the prime source to go to. I think that's another uh, question that comes up quite a lot. Like, yeah, where do I get started? Right. Yeah. Um, so the, the easiest day is go to uh, Microsoft.com slash learn. That's our learning landing page, as I'm we call there it, right now, and and from there you find uh, a lot of training content. It's all available for free. You got training videos. You got pointers to documentation. Uh, you can spin up uh, hands-on labs as well. So that's the other nice thing because again, yeah, out of the the exam itself, where yeah, they try to focus on having that practical experience and not just reading and memorizing from the book. Um, so even if you don't have an Azure subscription, although you could create a like a the free yearly subscription, it's not obviously giving you access to everything. But if you want to deploy a virtual machine and you want to learn how to do it, you don't need to spin up the most expensive VM, even the the smallest one that's like thirty bucks a year, uh, a month, or maybe just running it for five minutes and deleting it again, because then you're learning how to deploy it, how to manage it, and that's how you move forward. Um, so my advice is start with the Microsoft Learn, uh, take a couple of labs, go through the scenarios and pick out the ones where you go like, oh, wait a minute, this is totally new. Um, I'm, I'm learning something new and I discover new services. And next to that, the other interesting part on there is the details about the exam itself. So for each and every certification, we, um, we provide a like a PDF document that's describing the exam objectives. Mm -hmm. So as a, let's say, Azure developer, yeah, you need to know Azure web apps, like how to run web, uh, web applications, but you don't need to be an expert on networking, but you need to understand load balancing, for example. So for each and every exam, there's a, a clear listing, like these are the objectives that you're gonna get tested on, on the exam. And for each and one of them, there's also um, like a, a rough number on how valid is it for the exam, like what's the, the weighting. So you could have networking concepts is 5% for the developer, but deploying web apps would be like 30%, for example. Mm. So that would be my starting point. The learn okay. website, go through the details, what do I need to know, and just start, start studying. Um, so uh, one of the challenges that I had, I used to take a lot of exams uh, earlier in my career, and I've kind of slowed down, not kind of, I've slowed down a lot mm -hmm. in the last few years. But um, <clears throat> one of the challenges I had was understanding what kind of questions are being asked in an exam. I remember that first exam, I would study like crazy, and I went to the take the exam, and I thought, this is not what I was studying. This is They're mm -hmm. asking different questions than I thought they would ask. Yeah. And uh, is there a way to prepare for that? Um, why, well, yes, I know. So that's again what I what I referred at before, where they're going to try to test you on a lot of practical things. So there's a couple of different uh, questions, styles or modalities um, you can see showing up on the exam. So the, the first one, I would say the, the straightforward one is where they're going to ask you a question and the answer is yes or no. So okay. can you deploy, I don't know, uh, a yes. Golang website on Azure, yes or no? So I'll just, say yes. <laughs> did you read the book? Do you know it right? Or did you try it out yourself? So that's okay. the easy one. At least um, I have 50 50 chance, even if I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, still. Uh, the other one is multiple choice, where okay. 
you got a straightforward question and you got four or five different options to choose from where you could again go like, well, you know, even if I don't know, I'm going to guess. But sure. some of those Maybe multiple choice, they could give you like seven or eight different options. Oh. Now, quite interesting is that any of those options is a somehow valid option. So a lot of times when, when I'm talking about certification, it's like, yeah, but what's that like that magic little trick to pass the exam, right? And I mean, the, well, again, the obvious thing is know your stuff. But right. on the other side, it is like reading the question properly because it's all in a lot of cases, it's really in the details mm -hmm. where if you know the, the topic, the technology, you start reading the question, you quickly look at the answers and you go like, oh, yeah, it's load balancer. But then maybe there's just this one little catch in the question uh, where you go like, oh, wait, it's not just Azure load balancer, but I need to use, I don't know, app gateway or anything else, right? Where it's it's really spending enough time on, on like finding the details, like what's the exact thing they're looking for? Because mm. obviously there are also quite a lot of distractors where they start, you know, the, like a case study scenario. Uh, you're the Azure cloud admin for a company with 17 offices all over the world, 120,000 employees, and you go like, oh my God, it's a massive environment. So somehow from like a psychological perspective, you start thinking about complex solutions where maybe all that information is not relevant to the question they ask you. Mm -hmm. So that's another way where, yeah, they just try to distract you a little bit. Um, then another question style that that's actually interesting is like a drag and drop where mm. instead of like asking you to type in like PowerShell comments or anything, they might just give you snippets and asking you to drag them in the correct order mm -hmm. or okay. um, like testing you. I don't know. Do you know how to configure Azure Backup? An easy example where again, you can read from the book like hey, Azure Backup. These are the capabilities. This is how we have to do it. But you're going to memorize it better if you actually do it. Yeah. Now, on the exam, it's a bit hard to, to let you go through each and every scenario. Um, although there's also performance based since about a year where you actually get access to a live Azure environment and you uh, need to do stuff. Oh, so they can ask you during to, the exam? Yeah, yeah, sure. Wow. But I heard and, and even on social media that last couple of months, um, that part has been removed. I think partly because of COVID that it's a bit challenging, um, even for the Azure platform uh, at some point in time where we, yeah, they were providing uh, priority to like the, yeah, the paid subscriptions, the, the first responders that they got the full Azure capacity okay. and not wasting subscriptions for like exams or, or trial subscriptions or anything. Okay. Um, but so back to the, the drag and drop. So instead of asking you to go out and configure Azure Backup or any other Azure service, they could give you the different steps and they're going to ask you like which of these seven ones are the correct steps to go through and move them in the correct order. Mm, that's and that's where you really need to go like, oh, wait a minute, I need to do backup, but that means I need a storage account. So I can only create a storage account once I have my security in place and stuff like that. So that's right. a, another really interesting one. Mm. So, and then the, the hardest one is the, the case study scenario. And it's not in the fundamentals. It's mainly for admin, developer, architect, obviously, where you got a case study with a lot of different technical and business uh, objectives. And out of that, they come up with a few questions. And the challenge there is not really the question as such, but it's about recognizing the dependency between technical and business requirements. So they could come up with a technical requirement that your, I don't know, your database needs to be the most performing one, where you go like, oh, I need to select um, the most expensive plan, that would be the correct answer. But then maybe from a business perspective in the case study, they go like it needs to be the, the most cost effective one. So uh -oh. you need to come up with, oh, how can I get the best cost perspective mapped with the best performance? Oh, then it's answer C instead of answer A. So that's another uh, interesting one. That's a tough one for multiple choice because uh, as a former consultant, I know there's mm -hmm. seldom one correct answer for questions like that. And yeah, that's again in, in yeah the details. Yeah, and it's it's sometimes harder to to recognize the details, like what are they actually looking for, and once you see that, 
then the answer becomes quite obvious. Mm, so, okay. That's good stuff. And anything else that you can, any other tips or tricks that you can give to potential exam takers? Um, well, another interesting one is that um, Microsoft provides beta exams for uh, yeah, sometimes totally new exams, like mm. the, the IoT developing one was a, a pretty new one beginning this year. Uh, but for all the other ones, like Azure Developer, Azure Admin, Azure Architect, there's like a yeah, every four to six months, there's new updates coming out. Mm. And only the, the, the last couple of weeks, quite a lot of exams have been updated. So the number is also changing. That's a, another topic that by itself we could talk for about an hour. Um, so you got like the, the, the 100 that's admin, where in meantime it's the 104. So that means that's like the, the fourth version of the admin exam. Oh, I see. Are, is and that one? If I've taken the 100, is it still valid for a certain period of time, or do I need to keep taking 101, 102, 103, etc.? Uh, no. So typically, well, so the I would say that the credential itself is valid for a lifetime. So, like you said, you're still certified on MCSD NT4 server. I am. But it's not interesting. <laughs> it's not having any value anymore, right? Oh, Unless okay. maybe you know. I mean, yeah, you guys were looking for COBOL developers only a few months oh, ago. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I ever said that. <laughs> like, I got a paper, I got a paper. Uh, so, I mean, it's, the, the credential is still valid, but when you take the exam, it's it's technically valid for two years. So after two years, you can or take an upgrade exam if it's available, I or see. you need to take the exam again, but by that time, it's probably already a new number anyway. Um, but for like the, the newer updates, the last couple of weeks, um, you could participate in, in beta exams. And I always try to take them, uh, first of all, because again, it's it's yeah part of what I do as a living as well. But it's also interesting to know like, um, yeah, what do I need to focus on? And on the other side, you're also helping Microsoft Learning uh, by providing feedback. And every now and then you could, like you take the exam, you fail the exam, but then maybe the week after you actually pass the exam. So you go like, hey, wait a minute, what's happening? Um, so what I do is based on feedback coming in from beta exams, they could actually revise your scoring within like two weeks or something. Oh, you passed it. You so that's always interesting. It. Yep. They, may, they may just change the passing score. Interesting. Yep. So let's say, I mean, I have no details how it's technically working, but let's say if like a, a thousand people are taking the beta exam and they all fail on that one question, they might decide like, you know, it's too hard. We're going to take it out. So you're not losing any points on that question. And that could be the, the tipping point oh, between failing or passing, right? Interesting. I haven't taken a beta exam before, but I, I think you for most exams, you get the results right away. And I've heard that for beta exams, you do not get the results right away. You don't know. I uh, know. Correct. So okay. they, so for the, the beta exams, I think it's um, within six weeks uh, after the, the release exam went live, depending a bit on the exam itself, between two and six weeks. Oh yeah, I always there's usually like sixty seconds between when I hit finish and I get my score, and those are like the most stressful okay. sixty <laughs> seconds of my day. So I don't know if I can handle six weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, even now with uh, the performance base, so when you actually have to do tasks in a live Azure environment, you don't get the results immediately anymore. Oh, you don't because oh, obviously okay. there's a verification process in the back end to to validate uh, if you actually did all the tasks and did them in the correct way. So it oh, takes about an hour. Uh, oh, before you get the uh, the results. Oh, okay, it's been uh, about three years, I think, since I took my last exam, which was an Azure exam. I mm -hmm. I forgot which one it was, but uh, it was required for my job, so so I took it. <laughs> okay. Um, but the other, since you asked for some additional uh, information, so a lot of although it's been around for uh, like three years already, I think uh, you can actually take the exam uh, from home or from the office. Right. So. In the past, you had to go to like a certification center, typically learning partner, but um, where you need to, to sit down and be super quiet and everything. Uh, but in the meantime, you can take it from home. So there's a, well, a couple of details you need to know. So it needs to be a quiet space. Mm. And quiet means like totally quiet. Uh, you need to have a webcam because you're getting supervised uh, right. during the exam. Uh, but outside of that, it's actually pretty convenient. So you need to have an empty desk. So you need to move your laptop or the camera around to show you uh, to show them that the office or the yeah the space that you use in the kitchen um, is actually empty. There's no papers, no drinks, nothing. Right. And then yeah, you could just 
take it from home whenever you want. So what I did for a long time is, yeah, out of the traveling, just booking my exam somewhere late at night, like 10, 11 in the evening, and just taking it from my hotel room. Well, that's a good yeah. idea. That's what prevented me from doing the home exams is because uh, I don't really have, I live in a condominium, and I don't really have that one clean room, mm -hmm. the, the uncluttered room that I could show around. There's always stuff. I'd have to shift things around a lot for this large combination living room and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and kitchen and <laughs> And office that I live in, and of course the sea monster behind me. Of course, he's, no, he, he might give be the answers well. away. <laughs> uh, uh, but the hotel. Is that an room, actual I was, painting? I don't know. That's that. I can't remember. Where I got that from. So I downloaded it from the internet oh, okay. somewhere. <laughs> um, and uh, but uh, yeah, hotel room sounds really good because that's mm -hmm. typically they're already clean when I get there. Uh, mm -hmm. When I start traveling again, of course. <laughs> well, I got a, a fun side story on that one. So I took a, well, I booked an exam uh, in a hotel room in Redmond. And so doing the tour around the room and there's like this big, massive flat screen and the person's like, yeah, you need to cover that up. And I'm really? like, but how, Why is that? how do I, yeah, because I mean, they can only see the front of you, but if your screen is like over there, they okay. have no idea if you're like, yeah, presenting anything on that screen. Right. Oh, so you need to cover it up. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm in a hotel room. How can I cover it up to go like, yeah, well, maybe towels or a bed sheet or something, but I'm like, yeah, try to to attach like towels on a flat screen that's attached to the wall. It's just not doable. Huh. And by the way, I don't I don't have towels in the size of the screen. So I'm like yeah. going down to the front desk. Uh, sorry, can I have some extra towels? They go like, yeah, but oh, so you didn't get uh, your room cleaned this morning? I'm like, yeah, sure, but I, I need some extra ones. So I'm the lady was looking <laughs> extra at me, like, moist today. <laughs> <laughs> What's the guy doing, right? And then after that, I was like, should I just take them back or should I keep them? <laughs> Yeah, even there, it comes with some interesting angles. Interesting. Um, all right, we're just about at time. What's uh, anything else you want to add? Um, well, I would say anyone who's watching and you got any questions, uh, don't hesitate to to reach out. Um, training, well, specifically Azure training, is what I do for a living. It's my passion, and certification is just uh, just coming as part of that. Do you have an online presence that you want to share? Um, well, people can follow me on my blog site. It's uh, 007ffflearning.com. What's the FFF for? Uh, that's maybe something for you to figure out where the name comes from. Uh, that didn't work for me. Double o zero zero seven or yeah, zero yeah. zero zero seven FFF, FFF as in learning. Frank 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 and then learning.com. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe there's a www in front of that. That could help. That's what it is. I need www in front of that. Yeah. Our, as your readiness starts here, we'll share that one. Cool. Um, or Twitter. I'm quite active on Twitter. It's uh, PDTIT. We will share that as well. Peter, thank you so much for your time. And you stay uh, safe. Thank you, David. And hope to stay in touch. Take care. I would say I love this interview um, and I hope it inspired anyone who's listening to uh, pick up technology. And if your prime technology becomes Azure, I'm pretty sure we can become friends. <laughs>